No question in regards to uh, what Mr. Silberdick and the wastewater treatment plant, the bond, the amount of it. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, last Thursday, the town manager, myself, and the chairman attended the meeting at the police station for people that had questions. And it was brought up about, you know, making the bond perhaps lower, taking some of the 6.6 .6 that has to do with the aeration and lowering that amount. <clears throat> But there was a statement made here tonight that it was determined that the excess BOD was attributed to Smutty Nose. But talking to Chris Jacobs, it doesn't seem like that has actually been determined yet. I think that's correct. I did talk to Chris today, and <coughs> BOD is a constant problem. It originates from various locations. Uh, to give you an example, um, you take a rainy day in the summertime at the beach, Everybody goes down and does laundry at the laundromat. BOD goes through the roof because of the discharges that normally come from those types of operations. Uh, I've suggested, and the director has suggested, that uh, we do testing in various areas of the town to find out where the prevalent BODs are coming from. Part of it's coming from smutty nose. There's no question about that. They have a high BOD content. But they've also been trucking away their BOD which means that uh, they're within the parameters of the state and local permit on the amount of BOD they can discharge. Uh, they've messed up a few times, but then again, we've messed up a few times. Right. It's just a matter of uh, what's operating and what's not operating correctly at the time. So nothing runs perfectly all the time. The BOD is a problem. Uh, and yes, we can regulate it. Yes, other folks can regulate it. And yes, we can do a lot to prevent further BOD buildup. All right. Thanks for that clarification. Yeah. <clears throat> now, will when that money nose is auctioned off, will the people have to? I don't think they ever really fulfilled their obligation to uh, do what needed to be done there. Am I correct? They were required uh, to put in a pre-treatment operation. You're correct. Mm -hmm. They did not. They actually uh, went to purchase one, and uh, the company they purchased from actually went bankrupt. They'd already paid them, so the money was lost. And uh, the result was that they had to truck their BOD, excess BOD, away from the site, which they were doing. And they were taking it to another facility that actually wanted the BOD in order to properly process their waste. Uh, whoever comes in is going to have to negotiate a brand new permit. No question about that. And I suspect that they're going to have to comply with the original requirements, which is to build a tree treatment facility, depending upon what they're going to try to discharge. Well, that's good. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Welch, um, Mr. Silberdick represented, and, and I don't check my town email that regularly, quite frankly, because uh, I'm here all the time. Um, there was a, an email traffic going back and forth. Are, are we being copied on that? And I don't know if that's true, but he, Mr. Mr. Silberg said there's email traffic going from some 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 people about what I he discussed. It's going to the Department of Public Works, okay. and they're asking specific questions. <clears throat> and those questions, they're trying to answer those questions. Okay, yeah, because may I, well, we get answers. Yeah, yep. You're going Here's to get them. May, okay. I, may I, uh, There's been traffic going back and forth between Mr. S uh, Mr. Silberg one time to me. Mr. Nichols, myself, and Mrs. Zanoy, and at that uh, copy has been copied to the to board. Us. Okay. And also, Mr. I think Mr. Zanoy, I think all of his are CC'd to everybody. So yes, there has been, and anything that has been discussed was discussed in the public meeting on Thursday. It was all about the at wastewater the treatment that Regina just brought up, and that was all discussed. It was all public. Uh, questions that they had, right. and they've had some, some, we've just gone back and forth about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and thank you, Mr. Chairman, for that clarification. And so where are we for the public's knowledge? Is, is the 13-8 in play for a, from, from uh, Public Works after their analysis and yours, or are we moving forward on that, or are we going to talk about this later on tonight? Well, the uh, $13,880,000 <coughs> is, in fact, the warrant article to be placed before town meeting. Okay. Uh, I have instructed the Department of Public Works to look at the BOD issue 
determine whether or not um, the aeration system needs to be built given the current status of things uh, as as we go on and they're working with the engineers to in fact effort that that item right now um, I believe it was mentioned this evening that we should abandon the effort to increase the aeration system uh, if we do that the current aeration system still has to be taken down and and the internal mechanisms cleaned and, and, and replaced as, as should be done. And there needs to be a generator purchased in order to run the system. It's not now connected to auxiliary power. When, that's, when the power goes down, if it's for any period of time, basically there's no aeration. We just super chlorinate. We just dump tons and tons of material in there to kill the bacteria. At the same time, we're killing what we term the good bugs in the system that in fact clean the system up on, an, on a regular basis with the aeration on. So we have to be careful that, that we just can't take everything in the aeration system and throw it away and not do it because it's not going to work that way and, and it's, it's, a, it's a dangerous situation. You could discharge improperly to the, to the marsh, which we're not going to do under any circumstances. If we were to, for instance, let's say we took the $2 million away for the construction of concrete, and that's just a off the top figure. Um, and we decided to put that on. In three to four years, five years, we're looking at another $13.8 million to do work at the plant. To add that $2 million on is going to add another, well, actually, it would be more than that at, at the time because the cost will go up. Uh, we're talking then $15, $16, 17000000 million. So we have to balance this. There's a need to balance the cost and, and, and the results and so forth. Um, yes, it, part of it can be eliminated, but you have to understand that it's going to come back and cost more. So we have to look at that very carefully. What's it going to cost? What do we need to do with the existing finances that the town may approve? And if you, if you, and I know that very few people have gone down for the tour of the facility. I'm very familiar with it. I think the board members are too. Uh, if you walk in there, you can see that we have equipment that's not been replaced and is currently operating 24/7. 365 um, that's been there since 1970. Uh, I'd, I'd like to talk to anybody who can run their car 24-5, 365 uh, since 1970 and it's still running because it isn't. Uh, you need to replace and replenish the systems that are there on a regular basis and, and keep them maintained. Some of those systems are badly corroded. Some of them need to be really worked on seriously. The electrical systems in the building need to be replaced. If we don't, we're going to end up with a problem. Now is not the time to be experimenting with that problem. If something goes that's worth three or four million dollars, we're in serious trouble. Okay. The town, the uh, deliberative is when? It is this coming Saturday. Okay. At 8.30 so, a.m. it starts. Thank you. Now, there's discussions about um, a delta in this, that um, these great uh, public interested citizens like Mr. Silberdick and the Taxpayers Association bring forward very eloquently and very politely. So we're basically at the 11th hours of board. Are we, uh, because that's what we voted on, going in at 13-8 uh, is a board um, in, in our, our unanimous vote? Uh, or it, based on what I'm hearing, is there any change in that? Because I'm still at 13-8, and I, I, I go with that, and I, I, I guess that's what I'm asking at this 11th hour. Okay, go around. Well, I would say I would be at 13.8 until we hear more from Wright Pierce and Public Works about, I know they're going to be working on something this week, correct? They're working very hard and efforting it right now. We're hoping to have figures sometime late tomorrow. Because I think just cutting it and not knowing what exactly we're cutting <clears throat> could actually do more harm than it would good. And I, I think you're right, unless we have the, right. the facts and figures of what, what they're specifically looking that they don't absolutely have to do. I think we still have to be at that 13A. Yeah. I don't think we can let the rational taxpayers of Hampton run the town. Okay. Okay. So I, you, yep. And you're supposed to I haven't been able to. And, and I still want to come back. I've got other things. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Um, yeah. I, I think after Thursday night's meeting, and I think they had some very good points, and I don't think we're letting the rational taxpayers necessarily run the town, but I think they had some very good points because mm -hmm. they had some very good figures that it wasn't until 2014 that the BOD went skyrocketing 
And if you look at the <coughs> figures, and that was CC'd to everybody, I'm pretty sure, yeah. that it went up almost in 2000, whenever they came on board, to 180% at one point, to 90%, to 96 And then it dropped down this year when we started making them truck it out. But it had gone up considerably. And I think we really have to take into consideration whether the BOD is the necessary problem right now. And I agree, we can't cut back, just say we're going to cut back in order to get a bond passed. But I do think if Wright Pierce and the department comes up with the fact that, yeah, after looking at the, the, the facts and the figures and the graphs, that maybe we can cut back, I think it's, I think it's crucial we get this thing passed. I totally agree that we should cut back if we can cut back, but I don't like the way it's presented here that we should do this because of the rational taxpayers of Hampton. That turns my stomach. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't think, think I don't think we're doing it because of that. I think Wright Pierce had some agreement at the Thursday the Thursday meeting. But Regina, that's Wright if I'm Pierce misinterpreting. It, no, I think you're interpreting correctly. But I think yeah. the other thing that Mr. Welch mentioned, which is very important, to save two million dollars now on a thirteen point eight million dollar bond, so that brings it down to eleven point eight. Well, we're still eventually going to need that $2 million, unless nothing ever happens in the town of Hampton again. No one builds. No one does anything. We're going to eventually need it. And prior to 2014, <coughs> I'll be honest with you, I didn't go on a tour of the wastewater treatment plant, but judging by what I've seen a couple months ago, it needed a lot of that aeration work back in 2014 before Smutty Nose was there. So I don't, I'm not comfortable with placing all the BOD blame on Smutty Nose, and I don't think from what I've heard from the Director of Public Works that he is either. It's needed the work for the whole 14 years. No, I, I agree with that. I agree with that it needs the work. I'm just saying how much. Go ahead. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So it appears that we're at 13.8. There may be a delta. There may be a, a discussion at the meeting. I would request, um, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Welch, that uh, finance provide uh, what that delta would look like if there is a reduction uh, in the uh, annual payment for a bond if it does uh, uh, diminish in its scope. And I don't support that change, but I think that's good information. Over 20 years, we're talking uh, an issue like this, and I would say uh, constructively, um, and I want to come back to Smutty Nose, uh, if somebody does come into that uh, facility and there's a hundred and so jobs there and there's someone that is, is taking that over and they, they operate something and there's a mechanical failure there and it's the middle of summer, uh, the scenario is uh, that they have to shut down uh, they have to not have people work. I would think, if not necessarily. Well, but I'm saying that's 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 a threat. If it's we're if we're going to have if we're going to have the stringent requirements that Mr. Silberdick rightfully uh, and appropriately uh, addresses, um, that's an issue. So I, I would like the, the finance to uh, uh, provide those figures, and I think there should be a uh, a point, and certainly anybody can do anything, which is their right uh, on the floor in the town. Uh, but there's a there's a point where. Is a body of selectmen. Uh, we we go in at thirteen eight, or we make a change. And happy to meet at the chairman's pleasure or yours. But uh, at right now I'm at thirteen eight, and and uh, I want I've got some other questions for you. I'd like to <coughs> see as before we present the article, make the changes if they can be made. If they can't be made, then let them fight it out on the floor. We we are planning on we we are efforting that information now to see what it looks like with Wright Pierce. If, if, for instance, aeration can be eliminated, what will that cost be? What can be taken out of the budget? What can't be taken out of the budget because of other constraints? I think one of the things that people need to remember is the town will not pay 24 percent of this bond. The state of New Hampshire is going to pay 20 percent of it, and the town of Rye is going to pay 4 percent of it at the minimum. So 24 percent of this bond is being paid by others in addition to everything else. Uh, my, my real concern is uh, that when we get down the road three or four years, we're going to pancake two bonds on top of the, in essence, two bonds on top of the town, another $13 million plus an additional two, three, or four million, depending on what the aeration is going to cost if it's taken out. So we need to be very careful about how we plan that, what the aeration does for us, what it does for us over the long run, and how much money it would either save or not save for the town. So that you'll have those figures probably by tomorrow or the next day. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and anything else on the wastewater? Okay. The second issue is uh, with the uh, unfortunate uh, um, uh, auction or whatever is going on with Smutty Nose. 
uh, we in Esquires here uh, uh, provided uh, aid in, in terms of that uh, project when it was going in. We were very helpful, very supportive. Uh, and now that it's gone into a, uh, um, an auction, and I, I'm not an expert, I don't know if it's in bankruptcy, uh, is the town protected in all of its uh, interests as a result of this auction in terms of any obligations with that corporation um, or any uh, um, agreements that we had? And I, would like, like, I would like to make sure that we do that. And I don't need an answer tonight, but I just wanted to orient the board oh, yeah. and uh, get a legal opinion on it. Thank you. Were you, were you going to give something on that? Uh, th there are uh, there have been several aspects in which uh, the town participated. One was a economic development authority grant, which involved the extension of the sewer line up Toll Farm Road, and uh, the town was basically the sponsor of the grant. Half the funding was coming from the federal government, and the other half was coming from Smutty Nose. I believe all of the Smutty Nose contributions were made. I'm That's my understanding. Yes. So that was uh, a number, several years ago. So that those contributions were made, and the grant was closed out. Uh, a second aspect had to do with whether or not there would be uh, any issue about uh, current use taxation, and I asked the tax assessor that very question: whether that there was any outstanding issue in that regard, and he indicated that there was not. But you're correct, Mr. Bean, that we ought to check into whether or not there's any other loose ends. Thank you so much. And then a, a, a wrap up on that that concept, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, is going forward. If there is a new buyer of that property, uh, what is the board's position in terms of the BOD? Because that was never satisfied by the uh, the folks that used to run it or um, formerly ran it. And uh, what is the position? So uh, this board is firm prior to any purchase about our conditions uh, that they must uh, satisfy in terms of the board. Uh, in terms of BOD and uh, what we'll allow, and, and that way, uh, it's a it's a clear transaction, and everybody knows what their responsibilities are and their obligations to the town, which were unmet um, by this this prior venture. But going forward, I think it's important uh, for this town and anyone that's per, uh, coming in to buy that that uh, we make sure that the new owner, which may be Provident Bank uh, or anyone else, knows that that is going to be a requirement. I think that needs to be made loud and clear. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a question. <coughs> they owe back taxes? Yes, they yes. do. 158000 <coughs> That's my understanding. Yep. We're second in line, or we? Uh, generally, taxes are first. I'm not sure what, what, uh, who else might be first, but we're ahead of the banks, that's for sure. Yeah. What, we're ahead of the banks? Wasn't yes, there? We, yes. So, that, so whomever sent, there was an email sent? We are the primary recipient okay. of taxes. So we are the primary? We're the primary. All right, so anything that comes out of the auction goes the to us first. The only thing that first. could change that would be a federal bankruptcy court. Okay, okay. <coughs> and, okay. There, and, and there is a protection in the bankruptcy court for, for taxes that are due. Good. I'd also like to talk about this letter here before we talk about the deliberative session. What letter is that? It's the one that talks about that there's septic systems leaking into Northampton. Go ahead. I, I'm not... In here, it says that uh, Northampton has been, um, uh, they have found high fecal contain counts in the marsh within the waters that pass under Appledore Avenue in Northampton. This has been an ongoing issue with them for several years, and their investigation led them to identify homes in their community that were discharging untreated affluent into the marsh. After they removed these sources within Northampton, they still had an issue with high fecal counts, which led them to obtain water samples that point to an unidentified problem within Hampton. Having the town of Northampton Hampton notify us of this situation and showing reasonable data that the issue may lay within the town of Hampton forces me as director, Chris Jacobs, to implement certain processes that and procedures to identify and possibly eliminate these potential sources of pollution. In the spring, when temperatures higher than 40 degrees, the sewer and drainage division will clean the sewer mains adjacent to the problem area. Immediately following cleaning, the sewer and drainage division will video and inspect the mains to determine if the collection system has a defect or issue 
which is the cause of the release of untreated affluent. If no collection system cause is found, we will then be implicating additional groundwater sampling downslope of two septic systems that may be contributing to the area issue. So it makes it sound like these two septic systems have been identified. If the additional groundwater sampling determines that the source is the two residential septic systems, then a written request to inspect the septic systems will be prepared and sent. The letters will be presented requesting an inspection date at least seven days out from the date of the, of the letter. If the septic systems are found to be the source of the untreated affluent, then we may need to direct the property owners to connect to the town sewer collection system under Ordinance 46406-3B. If the septic systems are not a cause of the release of untreated affluent, the area of investigation will be needed to expand and a new action plan determined. I mean, what's this all about? Northampton has periodically over the years, because they have no public sewer, mm -hmm. had difficulty with septic systems that were leaching and, and, and uh, not being not taking care of themselves properly in accordance with their design. And they've been tracing those down. They still have material that's coming downstream, which goes out through uh, the area where that the, the, the brook is at Northeast Lane that goes out and uh, takes care of that cove that's up in there and drains in and out. There appear to be some contamination, uh, which could be from a septic system. We don't know that yet because there's, there's currently ice up there. Within Hampton. Within Hampton, maybe. Well, don't why know. aren't the places in Hampton not connected? Well, like, you don't. Do they get the choice? Uh, if they're a certain distance from the, the 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 primary sewer, they do. And there was when the primary sewers were installed up there, they gave some people a choice to connect or not to connect. So some there are at least two that we know of that are not connected. That doesn't mean that there aren't others that have separate septic systems for other things that may occur, for instance, for washing machines and things of that nature, which may be connected to sanitary waste as well in a backyard. Uh, but everybody else up there is supposedly connected to sewer. So as soon as the weather breaks and we can get into the ground, uh, we'll be testing behind these residences to see whether or not there is contamination coming from them. If there is, we'll work with those residents to solve that problem. Well, I'd like to know how this compares to the uh, the thing that goes across the marsh that seems to be such a big deal that the town of Hampton should have to pay $5 million for when uh, the whole town of Northampton doesn't even have to do anything and they can discharge theirs all over the place. And I don't understand why we don't force our people to be connected to the sewer system. Well, those decisions were made by prior boards of select well, and not by this board. I think we need to look at it. Well, we are. We're going to investigate it to find out what's it really going no on. It makes no sense to me at all to read a letter like this. And, and then we'll have Chris in with the report on it. I mean, after yeah. he, after the testing has yeah. been done, and and I definitely and then we want to know how much of this is compared to what's growing across the marsh. And not that we even have a problem anymore. <clears throat> we don't. Probably won't for another forty years. But or longer. This is ridiculous. Yeah. Okay.